So the condition is this liability that this family has going back many, many generations where one member or more drowns. And typically they drown in shallow water, they drown in puddles, they drown in places that no one expects them to drown. Uh, and this has been going on for several generations before uh, the first character who begins the book, Begamashi, becomes aware of it. And by the end of the book, the mystery of this condition is finally solved. I think the, the business of home is always of great fascination to me, having been born on one continent and educated in another, and now living the best part of my life in a third continent. And so for my characters, uh, the first generation, Big Amachi, uh, when she gets married, she's essentially giving up her home to be in this new home, and she will uh, eventually pass away there. And that's just how life was in the 1900s. And the second generation character, Philippos, tries to leave, uh, wanted to leave, had the ambition to leave as a child, only to find that his sense of connection and safety was so strong that he wound up coming back. And it's not till the third generation, which is essentially uh, the equivalent of my generation, where the idea of home becomes more fluid and we're able to sort of have homes in many different places or call different places home. But there's always a sense of envy that you're missing a sense of one hometown and all its rituals and being there and knowing all the people there. I think Elsie was born and getting married in an era where women had very few other options. So uh, if a woman did not marry, essentially she would be become stateless. She would not have a home because uh, the, the laws were such that all the property of the father passed to the sons and the daughters were simply excluded. And so if they didn't marry with a good dowry by the father, then they had no place to go. So there was this incredible pressure uh, to marry your daughters and for them to get married. And I think Elsie, despite uh, entering a marriage, tried to find a bridegroom who would allow her the space to be an artist. And maybe had she been born in a later era, she might have just stayed single and, and you know done a good job of uh, being an artist without having to have a household, have a husband. And by the time of Mariama's uh, generation, uh, independence in that sense was a little more established, not perfect, but women were working, many women were delaying their marriages, many women were having much more of a say as to who they married, and uh, especially women entering the professions found that they had tremendous uh, power and agency that they never did before. So for a woman physician, for example, a woman engineer, things became uh, easier for them to dictate. I found that whole period between 1900 and 1970 uh, fascinating uh, for many different reasons. One, you know, obviously two world wars, but also India, after centuries of colonial rule, was about to be liberated. So on this backdrop, you had the characters of Lenin and Mariama, who were both witnesses uh, to the caste system that really put down a huge number of people uh, didn't allow them to own land, didn't allow them ever to you know, have a, anything more than a temporary shelter, put all kinds of obstacles in their way, including what paths they could walk across. And the two characters, I think, responded to it in different ways. Uh, Mariama became a physician. Uh, that was her way, uh, her activism, if you like. Whereas Lenin took a fairly common path in Kerala, which is to become an ardent communist. So the communists have won elections from time to time, just as you know, in, in America, the state government is Republican sometimes, Democrat sometimes. And frankly, they haven't done much better when the communists have been in rule than when they were not in rule. But Lenin goes beyond that. He crosses the fine line and becomes a Naxalite, which is essentially someone willing to use violence, to use guerrilla warfare, to sabotage the system uh, that they don't believe in. 